Hey, let's see, still want that again. Looks like that's a lot of some time for people to join the call. Thank you guys for your patience. Let us get screen share pause there. But welcome, my name is Shane Jenkins. You probably recognize me from the past year's challenges and you'll recognize some of these friendly faces as well. Uh, I work with HeroX and I'm gonna be moderating today's call. And joining me, we have the lovely Jade Kim and Doug Bender. Um, thank you guys for being here. Can I pass it over to you for a quick introduction, maybe starting with Doug? Oh, great. Well, thank you so much and good evening to uh, everyone. I can't see everybody, but I'm pretty sure there's a cast of thousands out there somewhere. Listen, I am excited, excited, excited about the Parity Project Innovation Challenge. I've sort of uh, been a fly on the wall, if not intimately involved in some aspects of this piece of work now for going on three, three and a half years or so. Um, it has proven to be a tremendous opportunity, really for all of us. And so I just wanna thank you all for being a part of it. As some of you might know, I am the immediate past chair of uh, Base 11's board of directors and I still sit on the board of directors and my passion has not waned at all. And so um, I'm always, always, always willing and, and looking to seize on the opportunity to be a part of these kinds of conversations, a part of these kinds of presentations and I hope you do as well. Listen, I want to just say one more thing before I, uh, I turn it over to Jade. Uh, and some of you may have heard this before, so I'll apologize ahead of time, but I'm so passionate about this. One of my favorite uh, of modern day philosophers in all the world is a woman by the name of Sarah Bon Brannock who says this, the world needs dreamers and the world needs doers. Well, what the world needs most are dreamers who do. And so the folks at Base 11 and the folks at Hero X and you, I think, are individuals who love to dream and equally important folks who love to roll up their sleeves and get something done. We have a real opportunity to bend the arc of history. We have a real opportunity to be able to impact the lives of so many other people in so many different ways and learn in the process and to take advantage of whole new networks and opportunities, mentoring and so forth. And so I hope you find this interesting. I hope you find it exciting. Uh, I know that I do, and I'm so much looking forward to seeing some of the uh, some of the entries, if not all of the entries, that get made uh, during this particular round and cycle of the Parity Project Innovation Challenge. Thank you so much for allowing me to take some time up front. I appreciate it. Jade? Yes, thank you, Doug. Um, that was a lovely introduction. Um, I'm Jade. I'm the Advocacy and Engagement Manager for Base 11, uh, and I've had the pleasure of working alongside Doug and Shane for the last three years um, for the Parity Project Innovation Challenge. Uh, and as Doug said, this is not only an amazing opportunity for um, those who actually submit, but also just kind of for the world at large, I would say. Um, I think that the objectives in this challenge are very unique and also very impactful and they continue to be more and more relevant as the years go by uh which is you know how do you harness stem um for good is the essence of it and so i'm really excited to see what submissions we have coming in this year uh they continue uh getting better and better every single year um and i'm really excited to talk more about the challenge today and uh, I'm really hoping that this can inspire some people to apply who might have otherwise felt like perhaps, you know, they didn't have what it takes or they thought, you know, it'd be too challenging. I really hope that this webinar um, helps to inspire you to go ahead and actually submit. Thank you. I'll put Jade and Doug. I don't think I could really have hardly said it any better. Um, this challenge is a great purpose great goal and a great community. And so with that, I wanna address that community real quick and invite you guys to uh, reach out in the chat if you wanna chat with each other or say, tell us where you're, where you're watching from today. However, if you do want to ask any questions for today's call, I ask that you actually press a different button on the bottom bar of your screen. It should say Q&A. If you put your questions in there, we can review them and come back to them when it comes to the actual Q&A portion of this call. Um, with that, I think, let's see here. We can choose to either go into the tutorial on how to submit to the, to the HeroX page or talk a little bit more about the history of the Parity Project and the goals of this challenge. So where would you like to go, guys? Perhaps we should dig right. into the history first, and I think that will kind of contextualize it. Let's bit. go for that, Jade. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, 
Okay, yeah. So as I mentioned, this is our third year doing it. Um, we uh, are partnered with uh, Sigma Pi Phi, aka the Boule, and we actually have uh, one of their most amazing members here on this call, Doug Bender. So Archon Bender, um, if you wouldn't mind maybe just kind of explaining the relationship between Base 11 and the Boule and how that kind of led to this amazing challenge. Okay, great. Thank you for that. I uh, I happen to be in the in the in the room. I may have been washing dishes or something like that when the idea was spawned, but it was a great idea. So I'm going to take partial credit. No, I'm not. Um, the uh, about almost four years ago now, uh, uh, the grandsire archon, the chairman of the board of Sigma Pi Phi fraternity, and the the founder of Base Eleven, Landon Taylor, uh, were engaged in a conversation and. One of the things that came out of the many things, frankly, that they talked about was the idea of being able to offer some creative way for more and more people of color, especially uh, uh, um, young Black people, to be able to lean into and move into the STEM space. Because quite frankly, that just simply represents an opportunity to not only do good and do well at the same time, in other words, come up with a brilliant idea that might even might change the trajectory of the world. Uh, but it was also uh, a little selfishly an opportunity uh, for someone to be able to achieve economic parity. Um, there's a larger conversation, if you will, about economic uh, parity. Um, we represent 13.4% of all Americans, but we don't represent 13.4% of the workforce or the labor force that's in various STEM related fields. And this is a huge opportunity because we know that it is completely the way of the future. Understanding, appreciating, applying, participating in, um, and living the whole world of technology. And so uh, thus was born the Parity Project Innovation Challenge. And, and so uh, Sigma Pi Phi, a little bit about that organization, I think it's important. Sigma Pi Phi, frankly, is the oldest Black Greek letter organization in the world. Some folks also know it as the know, know it as the talented tenth. And so there's some incredibly brilliant folks from A to Z associated with this particular organization. The reason why we felt so important to partner the vision and the dreams of, a, of Base 11 and Sigma Pi Phi is because they are very, very closely aligned. The fact of the matter is, is that that organization, that that fraternity really uh, uh, seeks on a continuous basis to try to find ways to help bend the arc of success, both for America and for uh, the Black community across America. And thus was born then the Parity Project Innovation Challenge and other programs that we uh, support and we champion at Base 11 to help lift folks into the STEM space to do good and to do well at the same time. So that's a little bit of, you know, sort of the context of the backdrop, if you will, for how Sigma Pi Phi got started and how Base 11 got partnered with Sigma Pi Phi. I'd be remiss, by the way, if I also didn't say that very early on, also the very first other strategic partner in this endeavor uh, was the Executive Leadership Council, the ELC, under the great leadership of uh, Michael Heider as president and its former chairman, uh, uh, Archon Lloyd Brown, who also happens to be a member of Sigma Pi Phi. Was that helpful? Absolutely. Thank you for that introduction, Doug. Um, I think, oh, here we go. We have one question popping into the chat here. Um, let's see. Yeah, Mark's got a great question in our chat asking where people are listening from, um, if they're in college or high school or a young professional, perhaps. Um, we'll allude to this in a moment. We actually have three different competitor groups in the Parity Project Innovation Challenge. And so, um, yeah, we'd love to know if we're getting more, more people from one group or the other. Um, that said, why don't I share my screen to show people what the, the challenge page looks like? Maybe we can speak a little bit to what we're asking people to submit. Hope it's just loading. Pardon about that. Okay, so here at herox.com slash PPIC, you'll see that we've got this year's version of the Parity Project Innovation Challenge. Now, Doug was giving you a little bit of a background, which you can find more information on in this about the sponsors tab here. If you'd like to learn more about uh, the Boule or Sigma Pi Phi, as they're also known. Um, coming over to this summary tab, we'll make it pretty clear. We need your bold ideas to answer a big question. 
How can technology help achieve economic parity for Black America? Um, Doug, would you mind speaking a little bit further to why you guys chose this particular approach to this problem um, and how you settled on this form of the challenge concept? Well, well, th yeah, thank you for that. Uh, it's pretty simple, right? Um, again, uh, when you look at the the fastest growing, um, um, highest potential for economic, uh, uh, to achieve economic parity, uh, uh, jobs and industries, they're all in the STEM space. And so one of the things that we initially took a look at about four or five years ago was the, the 10 uh, fastest growing uh, uh, STEM channels. And we have been passionately pursuing the top sort of four or five, but it was pretty simple for us, right? I mean, you know, again, I, I, I focus on the 13.4% was, was a simple anchor statistic. Uh, but if you look at some of those other areas that really seem to matter most, we are not there. If you look at, for example, in the legal profession, which has uh, a lot, which which has a lot to do with uh, supporting that STEM space and other spaces as well. As well, we're probably about five percent of that of that particular pop, uh, professional population. If you talk about scientists, if you talk about medicine. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, we're still woefully behind in those areas and in those spaces. And so um, to be able to achieve economic parity, and I've, I've, I've mentioned this uh, once to, uh, uh, I found a land in Taylor, I said, if in fact you had economic parity, particularly for Black America, you would actually significantly change uh, the gross domestic product of this country and its uh, uh, its position of national security, and you would you would wildly expand the uh, the 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 uh, middle class in this country, and of course that is the whole idea because when you think about it, the middle class is in fact the engine that the economic engine that runs this country uh, in terms of its uh, its its financial prowess, and so there were all kinds of reasons, if you will, for us to be able to sort of focus in this particular direction. STEM is the way of the future and um, uh, supporting uh, all of those things that can actually help to lift up um, uh, the country and, so many, and the world by extension in so many different positive ways, uh, it really has an, a great opportunity for a ripple impact that, is, uh, uh, that, that will probably continue to impact lives for many, 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 many years to come. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. We even had somebody in the in the chat asking um, a little bit more about what STEM really stands for, and I was typing a response there to say, um, although STEM literally stands for science, technology, engineering, and math, um, it's become a bit of a broader term to include just what you said, Doug, which is a variety of areas that have been growing in this day and age and really do hold a lot of potential for um, development and, I guess, like, like you said, kind of getting in early as you uh, head toward as, we, as we're predicting their growth over the next few years. You know, um, I, was, I was chatting with somebody just recently. I'm glad you brought that up, whoever it was that raised the question. Um, I was just chatting with someone in the last couple of days ago, and they have a much smaller localized initiative going on in the central part of the country that speaks to STEM, and they call plus AD, plus mm -hmm. art and design. Um, you know, there's so many different twists and turns on the acronym. Some folks are calling it STEAM now, you know, in order to give a nod in the direction of the uh, the arts community. But to your point, and I think it's a critical point, right? I mean, there is there's a ripple impact, if you will, on uh, almost every other profession that you can think of through the STEM space. And so uh, the idea is to be able to get individuals uh, who might be interested in pursuing opportunities, education and careers in that particular direction. I'll give you one example of a, of, a, of a profession that I can think of just off the top of my head that really can support uh, the, uh, uh, the notion of STEM, STEM training, STEM careers, STEM education, accountants, right? When you think of account, account, accountants in, in the sort of the normal common uh, sense, uh, you know, this is really all about, you know, numbers. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, whether you're in the consumer goods, which is where I spent pretty much my entire career, my entire corporate career, the fact of the matter is, is that, um, you know, uh, pharmaceutical companies and 
astronauts and, and you know, and, and, and other aerospace driven kinds of organizations and companies like Collins Aerospace or Dassault Systems, uh, they all need accountants. <laughs> so when you really think about it, there is this incredible ripple impact where you can really truly see some connections to it all. Even in recent conversations that I've been having with folks around the country, we've been talking about things like the arts, if you will, and you know, particularly in in music, we think about the great entertainers in in uh, in the uh, in, in the the world today, like uh, Beyonce and the Beehive and all of those other uh, great uh, 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 individuals, those celebrities out there today. But nobody really, or not very many of us, stop to think about behind the scenes work uh, that has to take place in order for those folks to shine the way that they do. It's all about STEM. Well put, Doug. We often referred to that when I was growing up as as uh, like the people who were working the pipes down below, the people who you didn't realize were so important but were essential to to teams functioning. Mm -hmm. um, that said, we've had a couple of questions come in from one of our our viewers, Demetrius. He wanted to ask where he can learn about um, past winners, and so I wanted to show him that if you're in this summary tab here, you can actually scroll down past the challenge information here we talk about timeline prizes which we'll, we'll circle back to momentarily and then the judging criteria and it says if you're looking for inspiration check out the winners from prior parity project innovation challenge cohorts and so you can click on these and if you choose to open them in a new oopsies in a new tab you can view the winners from oops sorry that's uh that was not the the link that's supposed to take me to you can view the winners from prior years um, by going to those challenge pages. So let's try this one. Here we go. So here we have the winners from last year and it describes uh, who they were, what their solutions were, and then where they placed. And as you can see, we had each of those categories as well for the different age groups. So why don't I talk a little bit about that? Just to make sure people understand how this challenge is structured. Um, but if you come again to the summary tab, you can see that just like last year, if I scroll down a little bit further to this prizes section, we have the three age group or career group categories. We have high school juniors and seniors, college and university students, and early career adults and entrepreneurs um, up to age 34 for all of them. And so in, in these various groups, you'll be competing against your peers for, for prizes. So only high school juniors and seniors will compete for these prizes and the same for these columns uh, respectively. So once you would have submitted to this challenge, uh, we ask that you either submit by either this early submission deadline, which is March 1st. Um, the goal, the advantage of doing that later this week is that um, you have a chance to receive some early submission feedback from our team where we can tell you what you might improve on or update before the final, final submission deadline of March 12th. Um, should you submit before either of those deadlines, at the very least by March 12th, uh, you'll be judged by our, our team of judges from both Sigma Pi Phi and Base 11, uh, who will evaluate you against these judging criteria, which are lower below or further below here. Um, and notice as well at the top that there's all these little headers. You can jump to each of these sections if you're not sure what's involved. Um, but yeah, so this should cover a little bit about um, what exactly we're looking for. You can take a look at past examples of solutions and see how they actually did a really good job of satisfying these criteria. Um, part of the goal here is to do a really strong analysis of your chosen problem um, to explain how your solution really effectively fits that niche and uses science or technology in an innovative way. Um, and then we also would like to see how feasible it is to implement your, your, your solution and then what the planned outcomes would be. So keep these in mind as you're, as you're completing your submission. If you want to know exactly what you would be submitting to us, um, you can see that here in this submission form section as well, where we ask for a bit of, a bit, sorry, a bit of information about you. you. You declare which of these age groups you belong to. And then here are the questions that I ask you to tell us about your actual disparity. Uh, chosen disparity. So we'll get into the submission process in a moment because I can show you what the actual tutorial or like process looks like. Um, but I think we have one more question as well. And that person has asked um, if this challenge is, is intended to take uh, action in a particular community, say just one state or a state by state basis, or if solutions need to be 
or broad and nationally directed? I'll jump in. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll go jump for in it. this one as, as well, if you don't mind. I didn't mean to jump ahead of Jay, but uh, I was just thinking about all of the various submissions that I have seen in the past. And let me just say for the record, um, th this, th this uh, in incredible challenge is not limited to time or space, right? And so it's really, uh, I think the thing that really matters most and, and, the, and the focal point of what matters most is your great idea. Um, and please uh, 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 don't think for a minute that your idea isn't a great one that might impact people in a particular community or might impact the globe as far as that's, as, as far as that's concerned. I'm thinking of one uh, Parity Project Innovation Challenge participant who ended up uh, winning their category. And a part of their story was that they were not going to even submit their idea because they didn't think that it was one worthy of consideration. So uh, you never know really exactly what impact that idea is going to have. And even if it has impact at the local level, if that idea is creative enough and innovative enough, um, you know, who knows? It may be something that targets a local community, but it may be something that we can rinse and repeat. It may be something that we can actually take and clone all over the United States or all over the region or all over the world. It, it's, it is up to you and it's up to your imagination and equally important, um, we want to help support you to get there. Yeah, no, I think Doug uh, said it very well. There is no such thing as an idea that's too small. Um, nor is there an idea that's too big or too local or too global. Um, really, your the your imagination, the sky is the limit. Uh, again, because this is all about ideation, and this is all about like even if you think your idea is completely like out of the realm of reality, um, there's still something to be said about getting it on paper, and who knows what will come of that. You know, just the process of, of putting words and concepts to your ideas. Uh, I think a lot of amazing things can be discovered that way. Um, and like Doug mentioned, one of the winners wasn't even going to submit. And I find that that's actually a pretty common occurrence with Base 11's opportunities. Uh, a lot of times we have spectacular students and early career adults who, um, whether they complete a program or they win a prize, uh, a lot of them often start out with imposter syndrome thinking, oh, my ideas aren't good enough. Or like, I, I can't really see myself uh, being successful, you know, with this venture. But um, once you get past that barrier, kind of that self-imposed barrier, you'd be very surprised what you're capable of and how much uh, your ideas can really go for. So if there's one thing to take away from this webinar is that just don't second guess yourself, you know, no matter how big or small you think your idea is, um, it's always worth just putting yourself out there because the the worst thing that can happen is, you know, maybe you're not chosen this year, but that's it. Because the best thing that can happen is a life-changing trip, you know, amazing opportunities for networking. And even if you don't win the grand prize, um, this is still very much something you can put in a portfolio or put in a resume. Just the idea that uh, you had the initiative to create this amazing proposal that's not only STEM related, but it's also altruistic. You know, you're creating something that will make the world a better place someday. So um, no matter what happens, you will walk away with something, you know, even if you don't win the grant. Well said. I love that, Jade. I love that, Doug. Thank you for, for that feedback. Um, yeah, I mean, if you take a look at those past uh, winner profiles from prior years or even check out some of the webinars we had where they featured on them, they've got some pretty inspiring stories. And I, I would like to extend that invitation to you all to consider applying um, and being one of those names and joining us in this. Um, it looks like we've got one more question that might be related to the submission process, so I'll, I'll bring it up. And if someone has asked um, what advice we would give to competitors who are less comfortable with the public speaking portion of this process, um, for those who don't know, uh, a, a, sorry, a, a strong element of this, of this submission process is not only um, writing down your submission um, into our submission form, but we also ask that you record a short video uh, if you're able to, to sort of tell us about your project in your own words, just summarize it in the same way you might pitch it to a, a, small, a small room of people who are interested. Um, and so, yeah, can I pass that your guys' way as well? How would you speak to those innovators? 
Yeah. Jay, do you want to, you want to take that one? I've got my thoughts as well. Yeah. <laughs> so just speaking from very personal experience, um, I, I've had a lot of jobs in the past that required some public speaking and, and the way that I kind of got over that is literally just practice. Like I would, if I was like stuck in traffic and alone in my car, the key point is to be alone. If you can be, that helps a lot. Um, I have a partner in the next room and even him overhearing me can sometimes get in my head. But if you can like just lock yourself in the car and just practice saying it out loud, it'll feel very weird at first, but the more you do it, the more natural it will sound. And at the end of the day, you really want to approach it as in, you know, you're talking to a friend you're very comfortable with and like how would you talk about this to them you know because again like nobody is judging you nobody is you know all of those thoughts in your head that that might make it seem embarrassing they are just thoughts um so i would suggest practicing by yourself as much as possible and also just watching videos of inspiring speakers whether it's martin luther king jr or like a tiktoker you know just watch those videos and kind of see what they do and just go for it that that would be my advice I, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll add a couple of things i thought i think all of that was perfect that jay just shared by the way uh but a couple of other things to consider um th this, this isn't really a public speaking contest you don't get sort of judged uh and uh, based upon your ability to hold rapt attention to um and so uh, 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 please know one thing that I think is really critically important. The folks who are looking at your video submission, they are rooting for you. They want you to be in the middle of this incredible and in some ways historic opportunity. And so uh, just know that that whoever those really few folks are, they are there. They're lifting you up. They're sending good thoughts your way. And they they really want you to do well. So think of it as an audience of, uh, I mean, like Jay said a little bit earlier, you I mean, folks that, that you know and love and who know and love you, and it doesn't really matter, you know, what you share with them, they are going to be interested. They're going to be excited about that. And so I, I will share that with you because I think it's important. And the other thing that I will share with you, because I think it's important, if there's one thing that I have learned over the course of my professional career is this, be you. And I don't think anyone is, uh, or at least very few people I know, are really nervous about being themselves. And so I think if you just kind of go to that place where you're really super comfortable um, about who you are and what your thoughts are and what your ideas are, um, then um, embrace that, right? Give yourself permission to be comfortable knowing that you're sharing your heart, sharing your soul, and um, nothing but good can come from that experience. You know, kind and caring feedback, uh, maybe the opportunity to actually win it all, who knows? But, uh, but I don't see any sort of negative downside to this experience, including the part where you're making a presentation. And listen, I, I get nervous every presentation I make, so I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you won't be nervous, but I think if you give yourself permission to be you, it'll be fine. That's well put again, both of you. Thank you. And I'll just attack on. Um, I was reminded of, of this fact a moment ago. Um, the submission form for this project or for this challenge does have that video submission element, but uh, it is also optional at this point in the challenge process. So you can still submit your submission without that video. Um, but I'm sure that question was coming from a position of saying, well, if it's optional, how important is it? I, you know, I want to make sure that I'm doing as much as I can for my submission. So wanted to mention that, but also even if you are chosen as a winner in this competition and you're still unsure of how you feel, that's what the base 11 and uh, Sigma Pi Phi teams are there for, is to support you in this endeavor, help train you and coach you on the skills that you need to present your idea to a larger audience. Um, and so I hope you can just enjoy that whole process of actually growing into, into that role um, if, uh, if you're chosen to win. Okay, it looks like that covers most of our questions for now. So I might move into the how do you submit portion? And then I'll invite the audience again, if you have any more questions, feel free to type them into the uh, Q&A box while I'm working on this part. But let's say you're ready to submit. You've come to the challenge page, you've read the overview, you've read the guidelines, you figured out um, what the judging criteria are, and then you've thought about how you're going to respond to these questions here. What you would do next is come back to the top of this challenge page, 
and make sure you're logged into a Herox account. I have mine here, but if you don't have one, you'll, it'll ask you to create one. Um, then you'll click solve this challenge. Once you do that, you'll see the competitor agreement, which you should read through at your own time and then choose accept at the bottom here. All this is saying is that you agree to the terms of the challenge and will abide by the rules. And it then explains in there if you'd like to read further. And then you click this begin entry button. Once here, there are some notes such as this is only a draft, meaning you can start it now and complete and save it to complete later. Um, what I would also suggest is if you plan on doing a lot of text editing, perhaps consider doing that in your own preferred text editor elsewhere first. Maybe that's Word or Google Docs. Um, it does save in this page, but if you have multiple team members working on it at the same time, and maybe one of you hit save before the other person does, you're, you, or, excuse me, you could lose some of that progress. And that actually doesn't apply as much, I realize, because this challenge is for um, uh, individual competitors only. But perhaps you have it open on your phone and on a computer, you could actually overwrite your own progress there that way. But you come down here, give your submission a catchy title. This is just what we see when we enter into it. There's like a little title and thumbnail here, uh, which, which gives us, um, excuse me, which tells us what you've called your submission. Um, then provide a short description and an image if you'd like that kind of summarizes what you're proposing. And then after telling us how you've heard about the challenge, there's a bit of a background section where we ask you to tell us a bit about your career or, or educational history so far, uh, what your, your desires are in terms of your career pursuits, um, particularly any STEM related activities you've been involved with, and then any personal stories that might be relevant to your, your submission. There's a few eligibility questions just to make sure that you are indeed eligible for a prize, um, but they're fairly straightforward. And then we also ask you to again, label which of the, uh, the tracks you are from in this challenge. Finally, there are the main questions of the submission form where we ask you to highlight which racial disparity your solution is addressing, describe how it is addressing that disparity. And there's some help text here with each of these, these questions, so be sure to read through that as well. Um, next, what would you do to implement it in the future? So say your, your idea is supported by somebody and they're saying, great, what's the next steps? How do we get this started on the ground? This is where you talk about your plan of action. Finally, talking a little bit about uh, the potential obstacles you can foresee for your for your solution, and, and we do encourage you to be honest here. Um, solutions aren't graded on whether or not they have zero potential obstacles or not. We, we love to see that you have the transparency and openness to tell us, no, this could be a real challenge, but maybe if I talk to somebody in this space, they could help me figure out a way around that. Um, we would love to hear how you, what obstacles you foresee and how you might think of uh, surpassing them. And then we ask you to tell us a bit about what your desired impact is. So what change do you believe your solution can affect? What timeline would that be on? And how would you measure that change? Um, we give you a space to add a little bit of additional um, context in case there's anything that we missed in those questions that you want to share. Maybe again, like a personal anecdote. Um, here's that optional video summary where we ask you to more or less pitch your concept to us in three to five minutes. So it's a very short pitch. Just want to hear it in your own words um, and to kind of give us the heart of what you wanted to tell us about. Um, you would upload that to YouTube or Vimeo and then paste the URL here. Just make sure that that's visible to, to us, the challenge judges. And then lastly, we do ask that if in making your case for why your particular uh, parity issue um, is relevant and can be fixed by your chosen solution, if, if you reference any um, academic resources or news news articles or other places to gain information to support your case, we would like you to reference those here. Um, you're welcome to put that in in the format if you, if, that you prefer, but we do give some advice on how to look up uh, some better ways to do that. Once you've done that, you can actually click this save and preview button. And let's see, actually, it needs a quick title here real quick. And then Normally, you would have everything that you've typed into this section here, but since I've only done a little bit, you're just seeing that. You can always come back, though, and re-edit that submission, or just click Submit Entry once you're ready. Um, but yeah, if you haven't completed all the sections, it'll let you know that there are some required fields missing, but you can always come back to this page up until that submission deadline to edit and resubmit. So say you submit to the early feedback deadline, we give you feedback, you can come back to this page, click Edit, Resubmit, um, and then you'll be have your, your newest version updated. I think that about covers the process for actually submitting. Um, I'll check to see if any more questions have come in since then, but Jade or, or Doug, would you like to add any context to that? Uh, 
I think you covered it fairly thoroughly. Um, yeah, I don't let's see. Yeah, I think you covered it from my end that I can see. Sounds good. I think we're pretty pretty set then. We don't have any uh, different questions except we had one submitted looks like through the registration portal earlier, where someone asked if Base Eleven offers year-round challenges like this one, or if you have any other ways to be engaged. Um, do you guys want to speak to that at all before we wrap up? Yeah, definitely. Um, so although this challenge concludes in a couple weeks, we do have opportunities that are year round, including the Boulay Base 11 Fellows Program, um, as well as internships um, for the summer, as well as the academic year. All of our opportunities can be found on our platform called Base 11 Digital. Uh, you can either download that on your phone or visit it um, on desktop. It's a completely free platform. Um, all you do is sign up and then you have access to everything we have to offer. Um, so uh, base11.com slash digital is how you can find that um, or just base11digital.com. So, um, oh yeah, it looks like we're going to visit there. Right now. Should come up. Yeah, hopefully we give that a second. Sorry about that. Yeah, so um, there's also a newsletter you can sign up for um, on our website where we do try to keep everybody abreast of the latest opportunities and resources. Um, so, but I would say the best uh, way to do it is to just join the platform and then you'll get real time notifications when uh, new opportunities have been added. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Jade. And my apologies, I couldn't get the tab to load. It seems like my Wi-Fi is focusing mostly on Zoom right now. So I, so I am going to put the link um, into our chat there in case anyone's curious. But um, yeah, I think that does just about cover it. And the reason I came to this about the sponsors tab is I believe there's a little bit of that information here too. So you guys can find that link um, and some more information about what's going on uh, at the moment. But with that, I just want to thank our panelists. Oh, Doug, please go ahead. I'm just going to add a couple of things that sort of popped into my head because um, I think it's really critically important. And this is a big piece of what got me excited about the Parity Project Innovation Challenge. Let me just say this, though, before I forget. I think we'd be sorely remiss if we didn't acknowledge again the incredible work and championship and support that we've been receiving uh, with this work. Uh, in partnership with the Boule and very specifically the uh, head of the Parity Project Initiative for the Fraternities, a gentleman by the name of Paul Griffin, is located out of Dallas, Texas, and he is uh, just a yeoman in this particular work constantly, day in, day out, week in, week out. He's traveling all over the country um, and sharing the the good news, the gospel of, of, uh, of the Parity Project uh, within the fraternity and even outside of the fraternity. Um, and I think without his, uh, his his deep involvement and support, um, you know, I don't know if we'd be where we are today. And we're in a pretty good place. I also want to say this because I think it's just so inspirational for me. Um, I had the really good fortune about a year and a half ago now to be with the uh, the first cohort uh, 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 of winners um, to in their travels, they uh, as a as a part of the prize package, if you will, for them, they ended up in New York as guests of J.P. Morgan Chase and some of the top uh, senior executives in that organization came together, including one or two of the top officers from uh, Sigma Phi. Now that I think about it, but they met up in uh, in New York and they uh, they were they the, the winners were able to sort of uh, do their uh, do their pitches, if you will. Uh, got some great uh, real-time feedback, uh, uh, wise counsel, uh, encouragement, um, and and engagement. I mean, see, they were really impressed with these uh, these folks. Uh, and then, uh, as a part of that whole package as well, uh, and I joined them uh, also in uh, Washington D.C., where the Executive Leadership Council, which has as its membership something like the top 800 or 900. C-level uh, 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 Black executives uh, across the country and really around the world. And uh, several of those individuals uh, uh, were uh, in, uh, in, a in attendance there when we uh, were hosted uh, by those folks in Washington, D.C. They showed up very specifically for the Parity Project winners. And as a result of some of those pitches, some of those individuals were able to get further uh, connections and further contacts 
uh, of, uh, of of some folks who were interested in investing, you know, a private uh, private uh, capital uh, in in their ideas. And so it was just an amazing, amazing time. And of course, we also got a chance to spend some time at a at a uh, at an unnamed museum, but we had a lot of fun. Uh, but equally important to that that uh, visit, we also spent some time at a place called the White House. And uh, that was an incredible experience as well, because the again these these winners were able to pitch their ideas to senior level folks at the White House. I think unfortunately the president and the vice president were out that day, but we were about as close to them as we could get. And then finally, kind of to wrap up that whole experience and that whole journey, um, we were able to you know, again all expenses paid. We were able to get them down to Nassau, the Bahamas, where the, the Boule, where Sigma Pi Phi held its first international conference in almost its 120 year history. And there was a special program there that honored and recognized those winners and gave them an opportunity to be able to be uh, an active part of a discussion about um, the work that they did, the dreams that they had, and um, and they were able to also interact with a number of folks there in attendance who were doctors, lawyers, were professors, and, and were actually even uh, college uh, 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 presidents and chancellors. And so they were, they were able to have this incredible exposure to this incredible ecosystem uh, that allowed them to see what's possible. And after all, that has been the mantra for Base 11 ever since it started. Access, awareness. And belief, and so I think it's an, an a marvelous opportunity. One that I certainly didn't have when I was uh, coming along. I'm not much older, maybe, than some of those folks that we're talking about now. But the fact of the matter is, is that man, what an incredible uh, um, um, position to be able to be in. And uh, uh, as Oprah Winfrey once said, uh, sometimes God can dream for us, uh, can dream a bigger dream for us than we can dream for ourselves. Dream big, and pursue that. You never know what the end result is going to be, but I guarantee you, you'll have a lot of fun. That was three great speeches today. You're on a roll, so thank you for that. And yeah, access, awareness, belief, you're right. That's what it's all about. And so I want to encourage you all to look into this challenge, take a chance to submit. Um, and then if you have any questions, there's a forum tab there where you can ask us questions after this as well. So um, in case you're watching the recording, head to that forum tab, ask your questions there. We'll be responding. Um, again, we have the early submission deadline coming up and then the final, final submission deadline after that. So just get it in before then. And we're looking forward to seeing your responses, guys. With that, I want to thank our panelists and thank you all for attending. This recording will be shared in a couple of days once it's fully edited. But that's all I got. Any final thought notes, guys? No, I think you wrapped it up very nicely. All right, way to go team and take care you all. We'll see you on the challenge forum. Thank you. Bye. Bye y'all. Bye.